Things Development with the Canadian Securities Exchange. I am joined today by my friend and colleague Bruce Campbell with Stonecastle Investment Management Inc. for our second week of our market update. Thank you for joining me, Bruce. Yeah, glad to be here. This is uh, going to be good. Well, it's another big week. So, I mean, we obviously started this routine at a good time of year. There's a lot to talk and digest today. Um, there's three big things that we're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about the fallout of what happened last week with GameStop, uh, you know, as things unfolded, uh, the attempted silver short squeeze that uh, was potentially out there, um, as well as we're going to get into some of the U.S. cannabis and uh, potential decriminalization. And we're going to end off with some of the IPO trends that we're seeing this year. So, why don't we just jump right into it, uh, Bruce? Let's talk about the fallout of GameStop. Yeah, so you know, obviously that that was all the talk last week of what these Reddit users were doing and sort of how they were, you know, not necessarily manipulating the market, but like getting together as a group and pushing GameStop up and causing a short squeeze. And anytime you have a short squeeze, what ends up happening is you know there's no buyers on the way down because typically if someone's short, um, they have to cover at some point in time. Well, they had to cover on the way up, and so. You know, now that that the shorts are all gone and the you know sort of momentum is out of GameStop, it's come down a lot. So you know, it peaked out at 483, and now it's in the 50s this week. So you know, it's obviously uh, you know can be dangerous both both ways. And so you know, there's lots of talk about you know, did anyone really make money in this? I'm sure we'll find out after the fact that you know there were some institutions or some investors that made a lot of money, uh, but there'll probably be a lot that 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 lost money as well. And you know, it's kind of interesting now you're seeing. You know, tons of politicians kind of jump on the bandwagon of you know supporting the little guys against the big guys right so which is kind of interesting and then this week obviously they moved on to silver so you know monday morning we came in and or monday night i guess or sunday night i guess actually you know they started to to push up the the silver uh commodity and then a lot of the silver stocks moved, had a big move up but you know it kind of turned out to be all about nothing because you know most of what was gained on monday was was kind of given up on uh, on tuesday so you know, while I think this probably continues and we'll see, you know, other stocks, other sectors that they, you know, kind of target and, and, and look at, you know, it probably has lost a little bit of its, you know, luster that it had, you know, sort of last week, midweek when, you know, they were really moving GameStop, you know, one way or the other during, during the day for sure. And interestingly enough, this week we saw, you know, some fall, some more follow through with the Canadian cannabis names because, um, you know, the, a lot of those were, were still fairly heavily shorted and, and, and they started to move up quite dramatically. Well, I think, uh, I think we're starting off the year with the trend word of shorting or short squeeze is one of the new ones that we're going to, we're all going to remember. Um, and, and just to clarify, I, I think people might be, um, they don't understand necessarily why they moved to silver. And, and I think the, the basis is that they were trying to take this what they saw as a, a strategy that was successful. Um, and they moved it over to silver because they saw that there was lots of shorting in the silver space. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So, you know, right now, if you kind of look at um, just on, on stocks alone, we're at uh, really, you know, multi-decade lows here for the amount of stock that's short. Um, so they don't have a lot of targets per se. That also means that there's not a lot of buyers on the way down to cover. Um, but in this case, you know, they were looking for specific investments. So GameStop was one that had a big short position, like an oversized short position. Silver also has, you know, kind of an oversized short position. Some of that has to do with, you know, the commodity producers and what they do selling their contracts forward. But it does create that short position. And they were basically trying to like cause those, um, those short sellers to have to cover because the price goes up and the pain gets too much and they have to, you know, close out their position. And to do that, they have to buy back contracts, which pushes the price even higher. Well, and on top of it with GameStop, I mean, they were working against a few hedge funds, but um, Silver is actually backed by an asset, which GameStop isn't necessarily backed by. And, um, and Silver is also, you know, there's some really big players in it. And, you know, that's people that are making batteries. Uh, they want to keep Silver at a certain price. It's to their benefit to try and maintain that level. So you're against some pretty heavy hitters if you're trying to make that short squeeze happen, huh? Yeah, for sure you are. But the Hunts did it and or almost did it, I guess, in the 80s. So I guess yeah. they figured they could do it again. So not the roaring 20s, the roaring 80s all over again? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, listen, uh, it was interesting to see, obviously, Silver, they didn't, they w didn't succeed as they had hoped to do potentially with GameStop. Um, so we're not seeing a huge amount of change in what happened with Silver in the end. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, it had a huge one day up on Monday and then a fairly significant one day down on, 
on Tuesday. And, you know, we continue to keep looking at, you know, trends in precious metals and we see, you know, that, that this tide's kind of been going out of that, those sectors probably now since, you know, kind of the fall of last year. And, and we certainly wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we kind of continue to see, you know, lots of sort of wash out until it gets really oversold from a sentiment standpoint, you know, when we go back to kind of last summer, the end of last summer, it seemed like every individual investor we talked to was buying gold and gold stocks. And anytime that happens, it kind of, you know, there's no bell that rings off, but we certainly take note, you know, and now a lot of that will have to be, or will be unwound because, you know, the momentum hasn't been there. So people will, will get out, it'll get oversold. And then, you know, that's when it has its next move. And I'll, and around we go again. Funny story on the silver before we move on. Um, the Vancouver Bouillon, uh, downtown Vancouver, had a lineup around the block of people trying to buy physical silver. Uh, oh, yeah. I find funny. Anyway, okay, let's move on. Uh, U.S. cannabis. Let's talk about it. There were some big moves. There's some big stuff happening on the CSC, a, a new issue coming to market. Let's talk about it. Yeah, so uh, obviously the news out this week was the Senate. So they, they sort of put between the two parties, they put sort of like a joint release out saying that, uh, you know, they were going to have some type of, of, of um, cannabis reform in the early part of the year. And of course, you know, everyone's looking at that thinking like, oh, this is the chance for, you know, decriminalization or legalization or even banking. And so with that, you know, you saw, you know, carry through again on a lot of the U.S. names. We saw the Canadian names, obviously, because of the short interest, but we saw a lot of the U.S. names move up as well, which uh, was quite significant. And then the other news that we saw this week was uh, was Jazz uh, Pharma buying out GW Pharma. And uh, you know, it was a fairly significant deal. It was a 47% premium. And it was, uh, I think it was just over 7 billion in size, which um, Jazz was only about an $8 billion company. So it really shows you what they think the potential is for cannabis and cannabis uh, ex extracts and, and you know, isolates that you know that that GW's been to you know they have gone through full FDA trials and you know they have you know a, a full product and this is you know kind of the end game for a lot of a lot of companies is to be that pure pharma and you know obviously Jazz is showing us that you know that's certainly an opportunity here. Well, and I think we all kind of anticipated this, right? We've seen a few waves of the cannabis sector and every time the wave comes back, it's a little bit bigger, uh, a little bit more senior. Um, the companies have a bit more legs to them, a bit more fundamentals. So I think we're kind of entering that as, is kind of the anticipation. Uh, the one I wanna talk about is we have a listing that's coming to the CSC. We're very excited. It is a $2.8 billion valuation. That's for Anno Holdings. Can you tell, them, tell us much about that? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's been pretty much anticipated here for almost a year now. And, uh, you know, when they when they went and did their last round of financing, it was super oversold or oversubscribed, uh, you know, hard to get a hold of. And so it's going to be one to watch, um, you know, the multiples that they they priced the last issue at was was pretty attractive. And I mean, they have uh, huge revenue growth there in a lot of different states. So, you know, it certainly will be one to watch when it's listed here shortly. You know, the one thing I do want to point out about, you know, companies like Verano, and this is where there's such a great opportunity for Canadian investors. We're in this odd tide where it's not federally legal in the U.S. So a company that touches the plant can't list on a U.S. stock exchange, which is why we're seeing such fantastic companies come to Canadian markets. Um, OK, let's talk about since we're talking about uh, going public, because actually Verano is an RTO. Um, but let's talk about IPOs. There's some trends happening in the year uh, that are that are a bit unique. Tell us about the IPOs going on right now. Yeah. So, you know, if you just kind of look at overall trends in, in the IPO market this year, we're actually seeing the least amount of profits generated from from IPO companies that we've seen in you know again going back uh, over a decade. So you know it's kind of a, a little bit disturbing trend. Um, and and so you know obviously anything that does have profits is 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 pretty shiny right now for sure. And I mean the one big one that we saw this week was uh, Telus International. So not Telus that you know we know of as the phone company but one of their subsidiaries that does you know call centers and digital marketing and and sort of the back end of you know a lot of different uh, businesses where they have uh, they have those services they went public this week and uh, you know it was again hot oversubscribed IPO probably has to do with the fact that they have earnings and uh, you know stocks traded well since uh, since it's come public apparently it's the largest tech IPO in Canadian history yeah, it was uh, about a billion dollars. I, I think it was just under a billion was the number I saw, like just, you know, like nine, nine seventy three or something like that. So it's very, fairly good size for sure. 
Yeah, and you know, there's one thing I want to talk about the Teleswim because it's it's an interesting um, capital structure, which I think relates to the cannabis space as well. So Telus International was a private subsidiary of um, of Telus as we know it, um, and it's been around for 15 years. It has, I think, 48,000 employees. I mean, this is a big company um, that most people just didn't even really know much about. Now it's gone public. They're expecting that there's potential spinouts that'll come from some of the holdings, and they say you might not know Telus International, but you've probably had access to it if you're online in any way. I mean, some of their clients are huge clients, right? I think Uber might be a client. They have a bunch of big clients. Um, but the interesting thing is the capital structure. So tell us, um, as we know it, um, they own, I think they still own about 68% and they have what's called super voting shares. And, and we see a lot of super voting shares that are creating capital structures in uh, cannabis, especially US cannabis companies. Can you just tell our viewers, what is a super voting share? Yeah, so super. We, most people, when they buy a share, they know that they get one vote at the, you know, the annual meeting or a special meeting. With the super voting, they have a multiple of those votes. So you have one share, but it might be ten votes or it might be a hundred votes. And so it allows you to control the company, even though you may not necessarily control all of the float. So you know, if uh, you had fifty-fifty between multiple share voting and the uh, regular share voting you would still control the decisions of the company based on the fact that you have multiple voting. So uh, you would have more than 50% of the vote because you have more than 50% uh, of the votes in, yeah. in, in, in the end. So essentially, you know, tell us itself, I, you know, it's a public company, but sort of, <laughs> I mean, it's still run by tell us. And as a shareholder, you know, there's not much moving and shaking that you could do as a shareholder with your voting power. The other thing about super votes um, or, or super shares, super voting shares, sorry, is that I think once you sell the super voting shares, the, the votes don't transfer, do they? That's right. Yeah. Then it goes back to regular, just one, one vote, one share. Right. Well, listen, Bruce, uh, there was so much going on this week. I can't wait to see what's going to happen next week. Thank you again for joining us. Um, make sure that you guys subscribe. If you subscribe to CSC TV, you'll get updates on this weekly market update as it comes up, as well as all the other great content we're putting together. Thank you again, Bruce. Have a great weekend. Yeah, have a great weekend. Thanks a lot.